a couple of years ago, I made this trick suitcase for a conjurer clown uh, for a stage show. Um, it does several tricks, about eight of them in all, but uh, the relevant ones today are the fact it can walk off stage entirely of its own accord. Whereupon it can stop and then um, it can fall over. Um, the drive mechanism has worked entirely on uh, tooth belts. I use them quite a bit. Um, two of the tooth belts act as like caterpillar tracks and the third one is the drive. I'll show you it working. There are limitations to the movements you can get out of simple cranks and levers, so a lot of sewing machines also use cams. This machine's actually a cobbler's machine used for sewing leather. The cams can create a much wider range of movements using irregularly shaped slots and discs like this one. Just like cranks and levers, these have all sorts of uses, and I quite often use them myself. This is the warder in the Science Museum. I made the warder with a simple crank at first, but then he just moved his head evenly from side to side. And it didn't look at all realistic, it looked entirely mechanical. So I swapped it for a cam, and then it gave it its sort of jerky motion, and he actually looked as if he was looking around. And looking down at his watch was the same. Instead of a continuous down and up movement, it needed to be down, pause and up. So I used another cam. This is a doctor I made who writes out illegible prescriptions. Cams can be used for really complicated movements. Most modern sewing machines can do a wide variety of fancy stitches. They look a lot more complicated, but there's only one basic extra movement, and that's moving the needle from side to side. And by combining sideways needle movements with uh, variable cloth feed movements, all sorts of fancy stitches become possible. Each stitch has a different cam. If I change to a different stitch, the cam follower moves, and you can see it moving to a different rhythm. This is one of the latest electronic machines. The idea behind it is really quite simple. Instead of using cams to vary the needle and the cloth movement, it uses these devices called stepper motors. Each pulse of electricity I send it makes it go round one step. And I can use it to um, move a lever in just the same way as a cam. I'll try and imitate it over here. Uh... By programming a microprocessor to produce a rapid sequence of pulses to control the stepper motor, uh, the movements of the needle can be very accurately controlled. I th think you can see the stepper motor moving the needle in uh, this machine. The stepper motor is fixed to a cog which moves the needle in small steps. This machine is a faff. Today, Singer has lost its market dominance, and German and Swiss manufacturers now produce the most advanced machines. But I'm not convinced that all the electronics is really a good idea in the sewing machine. However good the design, there's still an awful lot more to go wrong than in a basic machine. And I'm not sure that all the fancy stitches are really worthwhile. The service engineers I've talked to say that uh, a lot of people never use them. With the old mechanical machines that used to last anything up to 100 years, the lack of obsolescence was quite a problem for the manufacturers. 
Singer used to have a policy of breaking up any machines taken in part exchange to reduce the supply of second-hand ones. I suspect all the complexity of the fancy stitches has added quite a convenient degree of obsolescence. But anyway, the golden age of the domestic sewing machine is perhaps already past. Make me a gown that is a perfect yes. fit, like yes. the one you made for Lady yes. Duff. When it first appeared, there were no clothes shops anywhere. You either made your own, oh, the or if rich enough, got a tailor to do it. It will be a couple of weeks, ma'am. Even a generation ago, most families made some of their own clothes. But the sewing machine, besides speeding up home sewing, also made the off-the-peg clothing industry economically successful. Home dressmaking is today just a minority hobby, and the home sewing machine has lost its central importance. Mm, bit tight. The old machines were built to last a lifetime. Despite my doubts about the latest ones, they have to some extent carried on this tradition, and mechanically they're still surprisingly well made. I think that to make the machines fast, quiet and reliable, they have to be quite heavy and rigid, and they also have to be very precisely made. And it's really these qualities that make them such wonderfully satisfying machines.